hold on, let me get back to now. So thank you, Roxanne, for your time and you have the floor. Awesome, welcome everybody. I'm so excited that you're here and that I have this opportunity to share information with you about marketing online in the time of a pandemic. Um, this overview slide is kind of gives, a, gives you an idea of what we'll be covering in this class. Um, in this hour. So as you can see, there's a lot and I want to share as much as I can. But marketing your art online is essential part for all artist toolkits right now, especially, but always. So this information isn't just going to be beneficial for you now, but it will translate into things that you can continue to do after the course is over and after we are no longer in lockdown. And you may find that your business thrives much more effectively online. So in this session, as Hillary mentioned, we're gonna go over the basics of creating images using your smartphone. I'm gonna show you a resource video on the First People's Fund site where you can watch in more detail. And we're also going to talk about staying social on social media and things to consider when creating a website and creating social media posts when you're not a graphics designer. So I'm gonna show you some tools that are gonna help along the way. Okay, so marketing is, um, this is a slide, um, the, the cultural creativity marketing model was created by First Peoples Fund with that values and spiritual vision as the core of our, our marketing strategy. Most of the time, um, the, the, the standard marketing model is the one that you see on the left of the screen, which is the consumer, the, end, the, the buyer is at the center of our marketing strategy. And, and then we decide everything else based on what the customer wants. And as Teresa talked about last week in Monday's class about identifying our core values and the things that mean, uh, affect our art. Most of us create from a sense of our culture and our values and our spiritual vision. And then that radiates out and the final um, focus is the customer. So we're going to take what Teresa talked about last week and build on that and work a little bit on how we can, after we've created that vision and we've started to create our work, how can we now tell our story via our marketing strategies? So the first thing, the, one of the most important things as a photographer, of course, I think this is the most important thing. Um, aside from knowing what your product is that you're selling and knowing how much you're charging for your product and where people can buy from you is to get quality images of your work. And there's a, a link at the very bottom of this slide and it takes you to um, the, the resource page on First People's Fund's website. And there's a video there that I encourage you all to watch, which is some tips and tricks on how to get amazing images of your artwork using your smartphone. And you'll hear me say that a whole bunch in the video because it's super important because that right now, that's how people are seeing our work. If we can't get a true representation of our work through our photos, then people can't relate and they can't connect with our work online. So getting those good photos is going to be a great way for us to have that in-person experience without being in person. So I'm just gonna go back really quick because there are some um, points that I wanted to, I, I alluded to them a little bit, but we need to, as um, artists and business owners, we need to understand what we're creating. And last week when Teresa was talking about understanding our values and our, um, our vision, that's really where our products come into play. And we need to start to develop an effective way to communicate e either visually or verbally about what it is we sell or what we're promoting. And the other, the other component is understanding and knowing with confidence what we're charging for our work and why we're charging that price for our work. So having a clear description, whether it's visual or, oh, hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you, am I still, um, the, this, the standard marketing model where we, and what I, what, the standard marketing model encourages us to understand how to describe and talk about our products to our customers. One of the hardest things as an artist is to confidently speak about our work. So being able to develop a 
strong description and, and ability to communicate about what our artwork is, is really valuable in our marketing process. And if we struggle with describing, and again, thinking in terms of we're not able to be face to face with the customer and put our art in their hands or allow them to get that 360 degree view of our work, we need to have really good visual options for them right now when we're sharing that information online. So I, I skipped ahead to the photography bit, but and we're going to get back to it a little bit. But that's why knowing either verbally being able to communicate really strongly about our product or visually being able to present them online. And then knowing what we're charging, what, how much does it cost? Because customers want to know what, what it is, how much do I have to pay you in order to have that in my life? So be confident about your pricing, price confidently. And one of the things I love that First People's Fund says is, is price calmly. So a lot of times we get really popular and then we think it's, it's the best thing is to increase our prices a whole bunch. Well, I would encourage you to, do increase pricing incrementally instead of going from one pricing structure and then jumping way up to a fine art pricing structure. So just knowing where you are in that pricing model. And then also, where can people buy from you? One of the most frustrating things, and this is feedback that I've been getting from customers, not about my work, but about trying to buy in those online art markets that we're seeing all over, is I don't know how to buy from someone. So that's where the place comes in. Right now, most of our sales are happening online. So if you don't have a price, uh, sorry, a, a point of sale system, like how you can take money from your customers, you get that set up now and have your pricing you know, either automatically able to generate an invoice and send that off to your buyers or, you know, how, or are you going to use PayPal? Are you going to use um, Square or, or QuickBooks? What, what option of payment are you going to utilize? And, and if you don't take credit cards, is there a way for you to set that up? Um, promotion and because it's proven that if you have the ability to take cards, credit cards, your sales will increase. Um, and then promotion is what we're going to spend most of our time on in this session. And that's developing those visual assets and creating those social media posts. So let's go ahead and skip forward to the next slide. So we, we, I covered this a little bit already before we had a little technical difficulty, but um, just, some, just to overview quickly the tips for getting good images of your work. And, I, and just to reiterate how important that is right now when we're not able to go to those art markets and have people see our work and either be able to touch and try on our work, we need to have really good visual representations of our work online. So know your camera when you're photographing your work, whether you're using a smartphone, a point and shoot, or a super fancy DSLR, one of the most important things you can do is get to know how your equipment works. Prepare for your shoot. So if you have multiple items that you're going to photograph, I recommend that you set up your space and get all the, the props if you're going to use props, get your lighting set up, get all everything that you're going to photograph together, that your products, and just set up an assembly line. So if you have multiple cuffs or bracelets or earrings or you have a bunch of um, ledger art that you're going to photograph, get everything set up and then and have all the lighting, all the settings in your camera, and then you can just place the item, take the photo, and then just move on to the next. And if you can um, add something into the image that gives a sense of scale, that's also really beneficial. Um, using a tripod is really helpful in that process because then you can get your settings right and then just, just have that assembly line when you're photographing multiple pieces because not only is that helpful, but you're also gonna get a consistency in your images, which helps with the branding of your products and your artwork. Um, turning off the flash, I highly recommend turning off the flash. Um, any flash that's mounted on your camera is going to create um, it, crazy highlights and get um, a bad reflection. So just turn off those flash, the flash on your camera and play around with the macro mode. If you're a bead worker, getting some of those details in your bead work or any or quill work or any thing that you're, you're taking images of. And make sure you have enough memory. If you're gonna do that assembly line and you're taking images of like 20 different things, you wanna make sure you have the space on your 
your device in order to get all those in images and pack extra batteries or a plug-in and then definitely check out the video on first people funds you uh resource page and if you just go to first people's funds website you can find the resource page pretty easily so using video all of our smartphones our, our devices have the ability to take video and i highly recommend using video to show um if especially if you're a performing artist you know using that to show your performances. Um, if you're a maker or creator or painter or whatever, use the video to show your process. Right now, again, not to go over the same thing again, but we're not able to be face-to-face -face with our clients, with our customers. So it's important that we're creating that personal interaction with them online so they feel connected to us and more inclined to buy our work. Now, the other thing is, do you have the necessary equipment to offer a quality live performance via Facebook Live, Zoom, or Google Hangouts, or any of those online platforms where you can share your live performance? And, and all I mean by that is a good microphone so that your, your sound comes across in an appealing way. Um, there's only so much we can control with these online platforms, but doing our best to have the most control. And, and I hope that in the in the performing artist segment, they're going to talk some a little bit about equipment. Um, if you're a, perf a oh, and also so the other thing is in during the live videos is having an option for some of the, the I've donated just about every time when I watch a live concert and then they pin the post right at the top with their um, donation link or to buy their albums or anything like that. So make sure that you know how to do that. And if you don't, in our um, virtual office hour, we're gonna talk and, and demonstrate a little bit more how to, to do those things. So also having a variety of offerings when you're doing your Facebook or Zooms or whatever live concerts that you're offering as a performing artist. Even as a visual artist, this is an option to, to, to give links to your, your Venmo, Facebook Pay, or PayPal. So some really great examples of some process videos. And I'm just gonna click on these and cross my fingers that it takes us to their site so we can see their videos. Um, this is um, a First People's Fund fellow and creative capital recipient Robert Martinez and this is just a time-lapse video I say just but these are really cool it's a great way to show the process of creating now he's just showing a part of the creation but it's people get excited about these things they start to interact and I mean if you look he's got 105 interactions and comments and eight people have shared this post and I can't remember where he where, when he posted, I'm sure it's, it was it was last Tuesday, so a little under a week ago. So that's a great way to show your work and your your work process. And I'm just going to go ahead and close that and go back here. And then I wanted to show another one. This is another First People's Fund artist, John Pepion. He's doing a great job showing his process. Again, this is another time lapse video. So it's just really fast showing the process um, and people like to see the end result. Um, a good way to get people to come back and buy is potentially to say, to see the final product, go to my website. And so that's how you're drawing them into the space to buy. So anyway, you can see that, that process video and they're usually only about 30 seconds to to a minute in length. And you can do this both on your Facebook page and your Instagram page or any of your social media sharing sites. And these are great to put in your websites as well. So creating visuals for social media can be really frustrating. A lot of times we just post images and that's okay. There are some really great options out there for us, those of us that are not uh, graphics designers. And one of those sites is called Canva. Um, there's a paid version of Canva and you can do a 30 day free trial of Canva. Um, I want to say there's a free option, but I was trying to get into the free option and it wasn't working so great. And I didn't do a link here. So just really quick, I'm going to stop my screen share. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can do this. I'm going to 
to stop. Oops, wrong way. I'm gonna end that and I'm gonna go to the Canva website. So this is the, the, the home screen I created. I have, again, I have a paid, paid option, but I wanted to show you guys what the free options look like. So you, have an, you can create a design and then you, it saves designs that you've created or you can create templates or work from templates. And it has different themes that you can choose from. And I've already selected that we're gonna do a social media Instagram post. And I uploaded these images from my computer that you see over here on that left-hand column. And I also uploaded a transparent version of my logo. So if we wanted to, we have options. There are templates available. So I could just scroll through here and see if there's a template that I liked for showing my, my um, buttercup images. And if there isn't, this is not, this isn't too bad. There's three buttercup images. So you can see it's loading and I wanna change the image so I can go to the uploads. And so this one has a video embedded in it, which these are all videos. So that's super cool. Um, but we're gonna delete that and we're gonna add this buttercup in here. So you can see how easy it is just to place these in the squares. All I'm doing is clicking on it and dragging it down to the square. So you'll see when it's loading. Um, and then I'm going to add my logo. And I recommend if you have a logo or something that you use for a watermark, to definitely put that in all of your posts, especially if you're a visual artist, actually music, um, uh, performing artists, it's important as well to use some sort of, um, some sort of way to identify that this is your work. So I'm just gonna edit this text. It's spring. And all I'm doing is typing. And let's, and just to, and again, this is just a quick example on the fly. So if I wanted to change the font, like maybe I didn't like the way that, that looks. So I could um, change it and then you can move things around. I'm gonna click there. You can see the little move arrow that helps you to move things. Um, so you have the option to maneuver things and change them as you want to. I'm just gonna put this here just to balance it out. And the buttercups are blooming. Um, and so this could be a visual and all you have to do to um, save it to your computer. Now I would do a lot more um, to, oops, I didn't, didn't mean to do that. Um, let's do command Z, command Z. So there we go, it's back to normal. So I would do a lot more to make this more branded to me, but in order to save it, all you have to do is go to the download in the upper right hand corner and you can download it as a PNG file, which is a high quality Im uh, image file or a JPEG. You can also download these as uh, PDFs for print or for digital um, online sharing. So you decide what works for you and then download the image. And they like to show you options that if you get, um, if you buy it, if you pay for it, this, you could do this. So then I have this um, image that I've downloaded, sorry, um, that I can use to post on my Instagram account. And I would send it to my phone and, and I, there's a mobile version of this application that you can use on your phone as well. There's other paid options for doing edits. Um, and there's another program that every people like to use and that spark from Adobe. So I, it's okay. I find that the Canva is a lot more user friendly. So again, in our uh, virtual office hours, we're going to talk a little bit more deeply in about these topics. So if you have, questions during the q and I'm happy to answer them, but we're gonna do some more deeper dives into some of those editing programs. Um, so when we're, oops, 
sorry, I'm, there's a squirrel. Um, so when we're posting on social media, we want to make sure that we have some sort of an objective. Like what is the purpose for my social media posts? And they can be, I just want to hang out with people. That's like a relevant reason to post. It's just for social interaction. But for the most part right now, what we are trying to accomplish is either A, get people to buy from us or get customers to visit our websites where all of our products are for them to buy. Um, both John and Robert do a great job of directing people who are inquiring about their products to their website. And if they didn't have that set up, that synchronicity between their social media post and what's happening on their website, it would be a little clunky. It wouldn't be as easy as just posting a link. Here's my online store where you can buy this item if you like it. Um, so that's part of that being social on social media. And, you know, or do you just want people to sign up for your newsletter? Or do you have a new blog post up that you want people to read? So why am I posting on my social media right now? And that's a question that I encourage us all to ask when we're deciding what we're going to begin posting. Um, we can also be in the, in the world to just entertain. Maybe we just want to offer a free live performance and I just want to entertain my followers because they've been amazing and this just seems like the right thing to do. Um, again, social interaction or to educate and inform. Maybe we're teaching people how to do a technique that we've d designed or a way to take a great photo or, you know, maybe teaching people things, our craft online and educating them about it. Why, why we do what we do or how we were taught. That's another way of educating. Um, there's been some great posts out there. People asking, you know, is it okay for me to wear um, indigenous art? And, uh, you know, uh, there's different opinions, but a lot of times non-natives are the ones that are able to afford our wearable pieces and it's important that they we educate people and yes it's okay for you to wear it but understand its origin so that's where we can educate and encourage people to buy from us so keeping social media social a lot of times when we're really wanting to make some sales, our tendency is just to post about buy this from me. Um, this is what I have to sell buy from me. If you haven't already developed a relationship with your potential customers or your people that are following you on social media, then it's going to be, it won't be received as well as be building those relationships and you as, as as if you were in an art market and somebody was coming up and inquiring about your work you wouldn't just immediately just say this is how much it is buy it now you would develop a relationship you would ask them where are you from how you know is this your first time at this market so how can you create that same relationship that same interaction when you can't be face to face with your potential buyers. And the way that you do it is by being social on social media. And on this slide are some tips to stay social on social because it's hard sometimes. It's a lot of work, it's exhausting. And, and I, I would encourage you all to just think of it as spread out over time as opposed to those weekend markets or the week long where you're just giving your all for that week. Just, just chunk it out, schedule times during the day when you're going to be interactive. So reply to comments made on your post um, and, you know, make sure that you're being, uh, in, uh, make sure that, I, I like to imagine that the person is standing in front of me right now. And how would I respond to their comment? Like, oh, this is beautiful. I'd like to have this. Oh, thank you. And maybe talk a little bit about your product, you know, um, are you interested in it? Because it is for sale. And then, so engaging with them on their, with their comments on your posts, even if it's, wow, that's really cool. Or even if it's an emoji, Hey, thanks for whatever emoji it is. You know, you know, what, what made you have that expression or, you know, whatever it is, just as long as you're interacting and creating that conversation and engage in your customer social media profile. So if you have people that are following you and you're following them back, Definitely, I, I like to, to say schedule in, in the day 
that you go on other people, your customers or potential customer social media profiles and interact with them in some way. Um, whether it's making a comment or maybe it's a cool post, maybe it's them wearing your work or hanging your work and share that in your social media. But keeping that engagement and then finding potential customers, maybe they bought a piece of art from someone that you know and you can comment and, you know, keep create a dialogue, building a relationship with your potential customers as well. And encouraging customers to comment and share your post. A lot of times it's hard for us to say, you know, please share this if you know anyone who might be interested, but nobody's going to share it unless it's something really, really amazing and educational or some sort of inspirational quote, then they're not going to share it and it's going to lose its um, impact. But if you're, if you say, hey, I'm sharing this now and I, I opened up my shop for online sales and I'd appreciate you sharing with anyone you think might be interested, you know, share to your profile or tag them below. And this, again, this is where having that watermark in place would be super helpful because then people can't steal your images and your work and claim it as their own. And they'll try, there's ways to edit out watermarks and it's pretty laborious. So someone has to be really motivated to do that. But I, I hide little watermarks in different places on my images that I can look and see if it's mine. So you can get really savvy about it if you, if you want to. Um, and imagine every post as an event that you're hosting. I kind of alluded to that a little bit. You wanna encourage your attendees, people stepping up to your booth to feel welcome, to enjoy the experience that they're having, interacting with you. And maybe they don't buy then, but they're gonna remember you and they're gonna remember, oh yeah, I made that comment on that artist post and they actually responded to me. There's like, you know, who, think about the people that you look up to as artists and the people that you aspire to be and imagine if they responded to a comment on your post. So just keeping that in mind. So social media right now in this time of, of, of maybe chaos in our lives, we need to set ourselves up for success. And one of the, the ways that we can do that is creating a weekly posting schedule for our social media. Now off to the right is just something that I created. It isn't necessarily my, my strategy, but this is just an idea so you can kind of start to imagine how that would look. And the other thing that I encourage, because sometimes you may not run into this issue or this, this process, what am I going to post today? I don't really know what to post. And so what I encourage people to do is thinking about their values and vision, thinking about your brand, thinking about your product or your art that you're promoting and pick three to seven categories that you will always post about. If I'm posting, it's either a inspirational quote, it's a how to, it's um, to inspire someone to do something. It's to get someone to laugh. It's a, just an image of a beautiful image of my product or a process video. So those are just a few categories you can have. There's a ton more out there, but just if you always know that I'm either going to post a quote and if you're using a platform like Canva, you can just create a template and all you have to do is add the text into that template as you make different posts. And then that's helping build that brand recognition as well. Um, and then pick one day per week or per month, depending on when you're going to plan it out and decide on the types of posts that you're going to make. And like that, that uh, schedule, the weekly social schedule on the right is just an example of how you're going to to plan it out. And what you can do is take that one day per week or month and create all the posts so that all the work is done and all you have to do is make the post, is post it. Or you can just know that on that day, I need to post this thing. Um, depending on how, how organized we are, it could either be um, as simple as creating everything all at once or um, creating it in the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and show you one of the planning tools that I've been using um, with social media to, to keep me a little bit accountable. Um, hold on. I'm trying to move this so I can click on. 
um, where are you? It's called Planoly. There's tons of other ones, and this is specifically for Instagram and Pinterest. And you can see there's a calendar. So it, um, there's a free version, and this version that I'm showing you is the free version. Um, there are a lot of other platforms out there that you can use. And I really like this because if you are grid conscious, like your Instagram feed, you want it to look a certain way. I've only just started using this again, and I, now I'm remembering why I loved it so much. Um, because you can create a theme throughout, and you can see the engagement on your posts, and you can create placeholders, and you can schedule. So over here, you can see in the calendar where those posts are scheduled. There's one that was supposed to go up. And the thing about this is you have to physically go to your mobile app and post the post. It doesn't automatically send it. So you have to be aware. You can set up alerts on your phone to make that happen. So this has a phone application as well. So you can not only use your desktop, because a lot of times when we use a nice camera, it's hard to transfer those images to our smartphones to post on Instagram. So that's really, uh, really, it's been really helpful. Again, there's tons of other options. You can create your own hashtags and we're not gonna get too much into hashtags, but, and then when you're creating a post, all you have to do, so let's just say this is going to be a post um, and I'm just going to add these hashtags in for senior portrait. Um, and I'm going to add those and you can always edit the text here. You can always take these branded things out if you want to, but just know that when you copy and paste it, they're going to add it back in. So when you're making your post, you're going to have to fix that and then you can just type whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then an option is to, you know, do the period space, period space or hashtag space so that your hashtags are way down in the post and they're not um, they don't look so cheesy, I guess. And then you just hit save or you can schedule it. So let's say I want this to go out on Thursday and then I can pick the time that I want it to go out and then just hit save. And then it saves that. And this, again, this is just a placeholder. So it isn't anything. This is so I know that I need to add another senior portrait here. But anyway, this is a cool tool. Again, like I said, there's tons of other um, posting tools. There's uh, Hootsuite, which you can post, um, create all the, the posts for all your different social media platforms. The thing that I like about this is it shows the grid for Instagram. So if you're trying to create a branded look and feel, this is a great way to do it. And you can put something in and if it doesn't look the way you want it in your feed, you can remove it or move it around so that it does. So for example, this quote, I want it to come up tomorrow, but let's say, I decide that I want the senior portraits to start e to I don't I might not be able to I can't move scheduled posts so you can see how I'm moving that and let's say I want it to go I can't move it in front of a scheduled post so I'd have to unschedule this unschedule it and then now I can move it around so you see how that works I just learned something new myself. So that, I mean, that's really cool. When you have the paid version, there's a ton more options available to you, but the free version right now is working great. Um, in the paid version, you can have your hashtags go into a comment instead of in the actual um, post itself. So keeping yourself organized by, and, 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 it, and it's nice, but the, the, by creating, a strategy through the week like let's say you're gonna launch a new line of wearable art and what I'm seeing a lot of artists do is they're posting teasers and saying this will be available on this date and then they launch their shop so then it's building up this tension and people are putting I do it for some people that I follow where I will put the date and time in my calendar so that I get the announcement and I can go on their site and I can see when they're starting to post all the things available. And, and it's because they've built all week long, they've built up this, this, this excitement to see the full shop and they're just giving teasers of the items 
and then you and then when they launch the sale when everything is available either you can buy it directly from their profile or you go to their website to make the purchases so that's a really cool cool way to build that anticipation same thing with um, performing artists you can do that as well another way to get yourself seen more so on social media that we know that there's the algorithms and nobody has truly cracked the code for making sure that all your posts are 100 percent viewed every time that they they come up first and but these are just some tips that can help you in that process by using all the features that the platforms offer for example instagram and facebook have the live option um, Instagram and Facebook both have stories options. So if you're just posting on Instagram into the feed, you're going, your posts aren't going to get as high ranking as if you were posting, not, it doesn't have to be the same post, but daily I'm using a post in the feed. I'm, I'm creating a story. Maybe I go live. Maybe I post to Instagram TV. So picking a couple of options on each platform to make sure that you're doing, you know, pretty consistently. doesn't mean you have to do it every day. If you do every day, that's even better. But I did a little experiment where I took a break from posting every day, which re was recent. And I went from a lot of engagement and a lot of comments and my posts coming up a lot to all of a sudden it just tanked. And all I was doing was posting in my stories. So, you know, do experiments and see what works. And another um, way to, to, uh, if you create like let's say you create a video for youtube how can you take parts of that video and use snippets in your other social media platforms so repurposing um, media or things that you're creating is a great way to reduce the workload as well um, if you regularly post blogs about your work um, how can i implement components of that blog into my social media to then drive people back to my website so they read the blog and or maybe go check out my about page and then they're like, wow, I love this person. I'm going to go look at their shop because I want to buy something from this awesome person because I want to have a piece of who they are. And so, you know, I mean, that that's like in a perfect world. That's how it would work out. But, you know, and then also on our we're going to get into websites. But how am I capturing information from people that are inquiring from me and using those tools as well? So use all the features on all the platforms as often as you can. And then I mentioned this earlier with um, John and Robert, where they, um, they have a good match between what they're doing on social media and what's happening on their websites. Or they have a great way to send you a link. Well, if you like this, here's how you can buy it. Um, so keeping your, your, uh, your website and your social media um, in sync. So if you have, if you're posting all this cool stuff on your social media, but your website has only work that you've done from like five years ago because you haven't updated your website, um, you know, depending on the reasons why you haven't updated, can you create a more streamlined process so that you're getting everything all at once? Um, one way is to embed your Instagram feed on your website, which helps with your SEO on your website. Um, but one thing to do for sure, and this is directly from the original marketing section when we're working on our website, is to create, um, right here you can see this image of this piece, of, this work, and it's a digital image, and it ha and this labeling process where you label the name, you give the dimensions, the year created, and the materials used, and your name, the artist's name. It's a great way to make sure you can create those categories and people are getting that good information about your work. Um, we want to make sure that our websites are easy to navigate. There's, and so what are two things possibly that we want people to get to with ease? So just think about it for a minute, not even a minute, maybe a second. You've already thought about it. So two things, where they, we want them to go to our shop to buy stuff from us or book us or whatever it might be. 
we want them to go look at our portfolio of work and we need to make that as easy as possible for them to find. So what I encourage everyone to do is if you have a website, call up like 10 friends and say, I, um, I, can you go to my website if they've never, and you want people that have never been to your website before and just ask them, Hey, how easy was it for you to find my about page or my portfolio or whatever it is you're wanting people to really hone in on when they visit your website and just, you know, maybe you make up a checklist of like, was it easy to find this? How hard was it to find that? Like have a top 10 list of things you want them to find, but minimally pick that one thing, what you want people to find on your website. Um, use high quality images. And that doesn't mean big files. That just means to make sure that the images are, are in focus, unless that's part of the appeal or the artistic interpretation of the image is, the, is, a, is having it out of focus. But for the most part, when we're taking images of our work, um, our wearable art or um, art that we're going to display in our homes, we want those images to be clear and to have multiple angles as well. Um, driving people to your website, um, have, have your site on your promotional materials. So just about every time you make a post about your, especially on Facebook, or any, any sites that you can embed a link into your post, use your link to your website. Wherever you want people to go on your website, use that link. Um, and then create links from other sites. So if you want people to go see this on this, um, your, your Etsy site or your, uh, your Shopify or whatever other platforms that you're selling from, um, I have one artist who he doesn't sell on his website. He only sells from, I think he uses Zazzle. So he, all of his links say buy on my Zazzle site and it takes people directly to those products. So make sure that you're making that process easy for people because we're lazy by nature and we will just not buy. We need to make those, when they get that impulse to buy from us, we want them to just be to, able to immediately take action. Um, and add your website. If you're sending out emails, use your website URL, your, your, um, your website address in your emails. Because you never know. Someone, you might send an email to someone and then they'll click on it and then become one of your biggest fans and best customers. Um, register keywords to increase search engine optimization. That's, that's important that being, being consistent and on updating our websites is one of the best ways. And one of the best ways to stay consistent on our website is to link our social media profiles to our website and also to have a regular newsletter or blog going out. Um, keep costs low. So uh, I, I, if I had it in the budget to hire a web designer and developer, I would do it in a heartbeat because then my website would truly reflect my vision. I use, um, I call them drag and drop websites options like Squarespace and those those platforms because I don't have it in my budget to pay a designer. However, if you do, I, I highly recommend it because they would be they'll be able to translate your vision into a beautiful website. Um, but for the most part, try to keep the cost low. Um, know what what your website platforms are charging you for if you're using them. So some of those different platforms that I was talking about um, WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, and Weebly, there's so many more and they have free options. However, if you do the free options, you don't get to have a unique URL address so that it'll, it'll be some crazy long website address. So I recommend that you decide what your web address is going to be and then pick WordPress if you're not if you struggle with technology, WordPress isn't the platform for you. You have to know a little, they're making it easier for sure. But if you're doing more than just blogging, WordPress isn't, unless you have help, it isn't necessarily the greatest option for you. Squarespace, I use Squarespace now and I'm going to show you a little bit of the back end on my website. Um, so what to look for when you're choosing a platform is the cost, obviously. So there is a yearly subscription fee. And usually with that yearly fee, you're, you're paying for the hosting and you're paying for your, your website domain. And depending on the type of platform, you're either paying for the, the email storage 
um, and any of the add-ons. Um, I'm really liking Squarespace right now, um, but there's some things I wish that I didn't have to pay for that I have to pay for. But do I have a landing page option? For example, when you go to a website and that little pop-up window opens, it says, hey, sign up for my newsletter and get 10% off. Like those are all over the place. And what that is, is that's building your email list. Because as soon as somebody gives that information to you, make sure you have a place for those email addresses to go, first of all. And then, um, but what they're doing is giving you permission to communicate with them in the future and send them your promotional materials. So um, do, do you have a blog option on the website platform that you're looking at? And what is the customer service like, their customer support? If you have questions, can I easily get my questions answered? So those are some key things to look for. Of course, there's so much more. But there's only so much I can share with you in an hour. Um, so some other options besides just Facebook and Instagram for promoting your work, creating a YouTube channel. Um, that's a great place for performing artists to, to hang out right now. Um, you can link your website to your YouTube, cha YouTube channel. Um, there's tons of options there. Uh, it's, it's, it's fun. I'm just now starting to explore YouTube and it, and it isn't so much for my photography, but it's fun. It's fun. Um, and I recommend you upload your videos from your computer, not your iPad, because it takes half the time on your computer. Um, a podcast, if you're a performing artist or you're an artist with a strong opinion and a lot to say, having a podcast is a cool way to get people to listen to you for 10 or 20 minutes every single day or once or twice a week. And, you know, that's keeping that interaction going where people, you're still top of mind. That's what we want to do is create as many touch points with our potential customers and our existing customers as we can. And so having a YouTube channel, having podcasts, and um, performances should be documented not only for promotional needs, but also for historical purposes. Um, so if you're doing a live concert online with Facebook or Instagram or whatever, make sure that you're, you're videoing that and you're saving those videos so that you have that reference for later on. Maybe right now YouTube isn't your place, but you don't know later on, you might want to have some content for YouTube and you can pull from those performances or maybe you want to use it to make a video. Who knows? But, you know, saving that because you're putting the work in and how can we minimize the amount of work we have to put out every time we're posting on our social media platforms. That's really what we're, we're striving to do, right, is to reduce our workload and take what we create and get the most out of it that we can when we're using, when we're promoting our art. Um, so some other e-commerce sites, we talked about Squarespace and after this slide, I'm gonna pop over to, to my website. So these are some other places where you can sell your work. Um, these are great, um, 8th Generation and V Yellowtail. Um, these are all indigenous owned, so you know your work is going to be re re represented appropriately. Um, Amazon now has a craft or a fine art section, so you can sell your work on Amazon in that fine art area. Um, fine Art America is another platform that I see a lot of people using. So I'm just gonna pop out of this, this portion, go back to the internets and pop onto my Squarespace account. So this is the back end. So this is, I only have one website with them. So I'm just gonna click on edit site. And hopefully um, I'm not using up too much bandwidth. So, um, so this is what it looks like when you open. Over here is where we get all the cool stuff. So pages, this is where we can see our our back end of our websites and, and make changes and make edits. So I'm gonna go to, let's see, which part of my website doesn't get. So we're gonna go here. So these are just some images that I have in the gallery right now. It's currently being updated, 
But you can see here, I've embedded my Instagram feed. So whenever I make a post on Instagram, it's posting to my website in the footer. And um, you, can, you can edit that. So let's say that I want to edit this page. So I'm going to click. I just want to show you how easy it is to make changes. And I'm going to go down here. And let's say I want to add something. I'm going to add some adding. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go here. So I just, I just changed, um, what is it called? My, uh, there's a square space, like 2.0, or <laughs> I think that's what it's called. And um, we're going to do this. We're just going to go. We're going to add a gallery. So we're going to just click on this. And it's going to give us some options to add some images. And I'm just going to go to... Um, I'm going to delete these, delete, because these aren't the ones I want to use, and I'm going to add. So I'm going to, you can either search images or upload images, and let's see, what do we have here? Oh, this is stuff that I loaded earlier, and I'm not going to save this, I just want for, per, for time's sake. So I'm adding in an image, another food image. So you can see how it added another section to the page and so you can decide what your galleries will look like my computer is doing a lot right now so it's taking a minute to load the image and this is just an image that i took from my iphone but you'll be able to see what it looks like and the cool thing is is let's say that i created this 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 recipe and i also made a blog post because you all need to know where I got my broccoli from and my tomatoes and my cauliflower and those beautiful orange peppers. So when this loads, I can go over here and create an internal link to my, um, to my blog post. So I can go here and go to a page inside my, uh, my, my website and then just select that. So then the link will, and I, it depends on what you're trying to get people to do. If you toggle the open in a new window, what'll happen is that that page will open in a new window and then you can just go back between the, the tabs. So anyway, so I'm going to, I can leave that and then I'm going to hit save and then, then we should be good. I'm not going to add any more images. So I'm just going to close that. So you can see that it already updated. And now I'm going to just go over here and click on my website, rocksography.com. Just hit enter. And then when I go to photography, you can see I'm going to go to food, food gallery. I should have shown you the before and after. Um, oh, where is it? Maybe I need to hit save. I didn't hit save. So let me go back here and I'm going to save because <laughs> I didn't hit save. So then I'll go back to the site. So this is what it should look like when I go back over there and refresh. There we go. Now it's there. So remember I created a link. So if I click on that, it opens up in a new tab and you can see I haven't posted any blogs because I'm just now updating my website. So there you go. But each one of these images could have a link. So that's how easy it is to make changes to our websites. Um, and I'm just going to go back in here and I'm going to edit. I'll do this later. I don't want to waste our time now. Um, but that's one of the platforms. Most of them are really easy to navigate and make changes. And I'm going to go back here because I want to show you some of the uh, marketing options. So you can create, the, and this is new, and I'm not sure if they launched it in this version yet, but you can create a mailing list. And I think I've uploaded a couple, nope, I haven't done it yet. So again, I'm just redoing my website. Um, you can have different, uh, different categories for mailing lists. So let's say I wanna create a uh, mailing list for my blog post subscribers or 
my um, yoga students or whatever. So I have different mailing lists to go to each one of those groups of people. I'm going to cancel that. But anyway, so you can do that and then um, you can create automations, but this is all paid. So you have to pay for it. But let's say somebody signs up, like you have your pop-up window come up and they sign up to get the discount and you can create an automatic thread of emails going to someone. Or let's say you're selling a, a tutorial, like a six week tutorial, and then you can create this and then they buy it by, by entering their information on the link. And then it's beautiful because then by setting up that automation, you don't have to physically remember what day each individual bought your program and you can just, and then the system will just automatically send it out. You can see the different sent and scheduled, um, which is super cool if you do any sort of email marketing campaigns. Um, the cool thing about, uh, we, we underestimate the power of an email list a lot of times. Um, and it's important that we grow our email list because what that is, is it's instant ability to communicate with our potential customers or our existing customers to let them know, you know, A, what's going on with us or B, what new product are we launching or what new art piece are we creating? Um, hey, I just put a blog up, go check it out. You know, that's a great way to keep that communication going. And, you know, you can set it up where people, you only send out once a week or once a month or whatever uh, time frame you'd like. You can create the, the Facebook pixel and ads. You know how when you look on a website and then all of a sudden magically it appears on Facebook and you're like, wait a minute, how did Facebook know that? Aside from now the new voice recognition, this is how it happens is you can create a pixel so that if someone looks at your, pro, your website then it tells Facebook that they just looked at some of your products and then they pop up magic. It's like magic. Um, you can create a Pinterest save button. So, which is a big place to be right now, especially for makers and artists, but that's a deeper dive. Um, and then you can look at analytics. I'm almost embarrassed because I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been very active um, on my website. But the cool thing about it is you can look and see people where people are visiting your website. Are they um, accessing it from a desktop? Are they looking at it via mobile? Um, are they typing in my URL? Or are they getting there through Facebook or Google searches? Um, you know, what are the ways that people are finding my website? Um, what operating systems are they using? This is like super telling. I mean, a Mac user compared to a Windows user, we are completely different people. Not really, but, um, and, and are they using their phone? Are they using a, a computer? Are they using an Android? And, and you know, it's interesting that I have more um, iOS users than I do um, Android users, visitors to my, and then you can see geography, so. But this is telling because it can help us determine our marketing strategies. Um, right now, most of my people are coming from the United States and, and, and Alaska and Hawaii, <laughs> but that's the United States. So um, for a while, I, there's someone from the Netherlands and people in Korea. So you can see where people are coming from. Just down here, it gives you that. And then traffic sources. But anyway, so there's tons of behind the scenes information that we can gather to help with our marketing strategies. Let's say I, I just launched a big Facebook promotion and nobody's coming to my website from that Facebook promotion. So I can look at it and see, is it being effective? You know, do I need to make some adjustments and changes because I need those people to go to my website and I just spent a lot of money on a campaign and it's not happening. So by looking at those analytics, we can definitely see if it's effective and working. And we can see like, maybe we're specifically targeting people in, um, in a specific state. We can go in and look and break it down via the, the geographic locations in, in the United States. Like how many people are coming from, um, I don't know, Washington state, because that's where I, most of my customers are. I don't know, you, you decide for you. But anyway, so that's like a little bit of the marketing and the, um, the analytics. And there's a whole bunch of other things that you can look at with Squarespace. I'm, I, I'm not a Squarespace promoter, but this just happens to be the platform that I'm using right now. And I really, really 
find it to be the most effective for what I need it for as soon as I finish updating it. <laughs> so there, there I go. I'm, I need to take my own advice. Do as I say, right? Um, as I say, I need to do what I say so that I get my website up to date. Um, some other, so these are just some fundraising sites um, that you can, can look at as well. And that brings me to the end of our time together. So as Hillary mentioned, um, on Wednesday, we'll be doing virtual office hours and it's on, that's May 6th, so mark your calendar. And that's 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I, I, we're, if you're in mountain time, it's an hour ahead of that time. So we will start at 2 for you all. Um, and in that session, we're going to take a deeper dive into if you have specific questions that you'd like me to cover over any of the topics that we discussed, that time I'll, I'll take that deeper dive, especially if I can address it in the Q&A section that we're about to embark upon. However, if you cannot wait and you just need to have your answers and you wanna to talk to me directly for some one-on-one -on -one help, I've included my contact information. So you can definitely email me directly. Just make sure in the subject line, just say, hey, I was at your, your online marketing workshop and I have some questions. And that way I, I, I know to get to it and we can set up a time to chat. Um, you can find me on Facebook. This is my business page. And also you saw my website. So you know, and if you see the little Robin, that's my, that's my guy. Um, he's my favicon, which I forgot to point out. Those are important. Everyone always forgets their favicons. And that's the little image in the tabs on your website searches. So that's, that's what I have. And, and I, I'm close to the end of, of the whole hour and a half, I think. Yeah, we're, I, I, I can talk. <laughs> I get excited about this. There's so much more that I want to share, but I just wanted to make sure you got those little tidbits. Um, but Hillary, I don't know if you wanted to start the Q&A section. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Roxanne. That was really a formative um, webinar. Thank you for sharing. I do have a couple questions. Um, from the Zoom group, um, Stan was asking, what percentage of your budget should you budget for? And I believe that's probably within the realm of marketing. Yeah, gosh, it depends on so many things, but they, there's different opinions, five to 20% is marketing. Gotcha, all right. Um, the next question is from Cynthia, and she is asking, what is the typical cost for a web developer to build your website? Oh my gosh, they range. So you can hire people to do your, your what, I, what I call the drag and drop websites and because they can get quite frustrating, but they rate, so, so there's a difference between a developer and a designer. So you would hire a designer to create the visual aesthetic of your site and then the developer writes the code to make it be a website. Now they can be the same person, or you can hire a designer and then hire a developer. And their prices range from 500 to a lot, <laughs> depending on the, the amount of designing and developing they're doing. I would, I would say though, you would budget about five grand, five to 10 grand for someone to design and develop your website, not using one of the drag and drop platforms. Okay, great. Thanks, Roxanne. And then the last question um, is actually for me. I was wondering if you could explain, you said earlier when you were talking about Instagram and Facebook and you were using like a acronym and SEO or an SEO. Oh, I search engine optimization. Oh, okay. Oh, you use that one more time? I think I talked over you. <laughs> oh yeah. Search engine optimization. And that's mostly to your website. Um, there's an algorithm with Facebook or all the social media platforms so that our posts get seen a higher ranking in the in the scrolling <laughs> so um met, like if you go into the search bar on instagram those posts that get the most interaction the most uh that they have the most followers and they use the most tools in instagram those are the ones that you're seeing first and when you go into the search bar on instagram same with facebook your organic awesome. feed if it's if it isn't a paid 
uh, sponsored post, your organic feed are those people who are using all the tools and have a lot of interaction on their social media platforms. Um, Instagram and Facebook both have changed the algorithm to um, include uh, comments. So it used to be that you could just let all the people like and comment below and you didn't have to interact. But now they're looking at it and seeing that if you're not interacting, then you're not being social on social media. So your posts get knocked down, even if, even if you've got a thousand people commenting. I mean, there's a balancing act with all of those algorithms, but the general rule is just respond to your comments on your posts. I had something else to say about that and I just totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> Any other questions? you're talking Hillary I can't hear you well that's what happens when you leave it on mute and forget um, <laughs> <laughs> so my apologies um, I guess one last question that I'd like probably throw out there um, that if I was an artist in this industry during the pandemic um, where really social media is really going to help me um, be able to create some sort of revenue or income for myself would be given maybe some financial limitations only have a certain amount of money um, but I really need to get my work out there, what would you say is like the first thing one should do? Like what is really important that most anybody can really do even if funds were limited? That's marketing. Okay. Well, every, so everything except for your website that I talked about today is free. So all of that stuff you can do on your own. Um, so the first thing I would say is start taking images of your work quality images. If you don't have social media platforms set up for your business, start creating that. Right now, social media is being flooded with everybody is now online. The competition to get attention is even greater than it ever has been. So what are you doing to create images that are um, scroll stoppers is what I call them. Like what makes you go, ooh, double take and you want to scroll back down and see what, whoa, what was that? So creating those impactful images is super beneficial. And then the next thing I would say is have prices and easy ways for people to buy from you. Um, if you don't have a payment option online, then figure out how to do that because Instagram has this new, uh, a whole bunch of new cool tools that you can use. Facebook is going to, they're supposed to launch soon. Um, a paid Facebook Live. So only you can only pay to watch a live video or you have to pay to, to view is kind of what it is. They haven't said how it's going to be like structured out yet, but that's supposed to be coming down the pipeline. Um, Instagram, if you go into stories, there's all those cool, like if you wanna sell gift certificates, let's say you do um, consulting or you wanna sell a product that hasn't been made yet maybe, but you want people to pay for it right now, there's an option on, on Instagram stories where you could put that by a gift certificate, but you have to have those payment options set up. And when you, when you go in and play around on in Instagram, you can see some of those platforms that you are required to have in order to take payment that way. So awesome images, start posting make it easy for people to buy from you. Gotcha, thank you so much. And I do have uh, one more question. It's from Cynthia and she said, oh, um, going back to um, the website you were just talking about brief briefly, she said that she would also like to know a good structure for a website, what to include and in what order. Hmm, that, so that depends on you. That, so I, per, in a perfect world, the first page would be something that gets your visitor excited about learning more. Um, what, are you, what are you promoting on your website? What is the purpose of your website? If it's to show your portfolio, make sure you have a ton of great images and then you're leading people into those different galleries. If it's to sell merchandise, make sure that you're ca catching their attention on that first page and then drawing them to your sales page. The other important things is to have that pop up to get people to sign up for your website or your email list. 
And, you know, what is your incentive that you're giving people to sign up for your email list? Is it a discount? Is it a free download for instructions on how to do a certain craft? Um, it's, it's hard to say because everyone's objective with our websites are different. But the biggest, most important thing is that it's easy to navigate and it, most important is it catches their attention and it makes them want to stick around. It's like you walk, like if, you, if you've ever walked into a store and, or walked into a store and then immediately like, nah, this isn't the place for me and you turn around or you drive up to a restaurant and the outside is unappealing and so you don't even go in. So you want the outside, which is your landing page, your home page, to be appealing and to draw people in. You want to entice them to come and view your work or read your blog or sign up for your newsletter. Okay, great. Um, it looks like on Facebook Live there are no current comments. Um, currently there's about 10 people watching. Thank you again for joining us on, on that platform. Um, maybe give them a couple minutes before we um, tie things up just to see if maybe somebody's hearing this and would like to maybe jump in real quick with a question. We'll give them a couple minutes. Okay. Oh, Roxanne, Cynthia said that is helpful. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> It's a hard one to ask. And again, feel free to email me and we can, you can tell me more about what your objectives are and, and I can formulate a better answer. That was very generalized. So don't hesitate to reach out. Um, well, it looks like on Facebook Live, there doesn't seem to be um, any questions that need to be answered. So you must have covered everything that people were kind of interested in hearing about, Roxanne. Awesome. I hope so. <laughs> and again, I encourage you um, to come for the virtual office hours on Wednesday. I'm gonna show you some, if I don't get any inquiries about specific things that y'all wanna go over or Hillary doesn't, then I will just be going over some general um, deeper dives into some of the topics that we talked about today. So. If you haven't signed up for virtual office hours, I forgot the link, but not that y'all can t click on it. Maybe Hillary, if you can post the link in the, the Facebook Live and then oh, okay. in the chat right now before yeah, sure. we sign off. Okay. I don't know if you have it readily available. Yeah, give me a quick second, I can find it. And it's also, um, we created a Facebook event and it's on our Facebook page. Um, for your virtual office hour as well. If uh, let me see, virtual. All right, I found it. Perfect. So yeah, it's in a couple places. Oh, here we go on Zoom, and let me see, share it real quick on Facebook Live. But another um, great thing to do to build your um, your online community is to follow other artists and see who like if they're do similar work to you is uh, to to see who the people are that are commenting and liking and sharing their posts. I'm not saying go on there and steal their people. I'm just saying, learn who they are. If that's the kind of an artist that you would like to be, who's following them? Who are their buyers? Who are the people saying, how do I buy that? And you know, don't go message them directly and say, oh, I have that available for a lower price. That's not cool. But to learn about them and to maybe create your customer profiles based on that information so that you can start attracting that type of a buyer into your, into your space. Not that you're going and, and taking their, their customers, but you're learning about their patterns and who they are by seeing what your, 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 uh, who, who you look up to as an artist or performer and, or, and performer, I should say. Is, is a great way to develop your customer profiles for your marketing strategies. Okay. I'm just getting a lot of thanks from Facebook Live and some people were able to make it in just at the very end, but I just reminding everybody that we will have this on our YouTube page as a playlist for the FPF 
resilience webinar series. So um, if you weren't able to make the whole webinar, we will have that up in the next 24 to 48 hours, as well as I believe if there, this live recording on Facebook should be automatically connected to our Facebook page. But again, if you have any issues, please don't hesitate to reach us on, probably the best thing is our Facebook um, Facebook site um, where you can send us a message and it'll come to me and I'll be able to assist in any way that I can. Um, so it looks like we have about five minutes left unless there's any other questions. Um, we can cut it a little short by five minutes. Uh, I just wanted to again thank Roxanne for just sharing her depth and breadth of knowledge and information on marketing. And it's always a pleasure just to hang out with Roxanne. She's just a great ball of sunshine and energy that just gets me going every time when we meet up. And I get the energy sometimes when I feel like I'm working home remotely and she just gets me going, gets my, gets my wheels turning. So it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Roxanne. And thank you again for sharing. And just as, as Roxanne promoted earlier and I shared in the link, on Facebook, um, as well as in Zoom, we do have our registration for the virtual office hour. So if you think of something later on tonight during dinner and you wanted to ask Roxanne, either email her or come to our session Wednesday, 2 p.m. Mountain Time to 3 p.m. Mountain Time. So again, thanks Roxanne. Thank you to all of our participants on social media, thanks. Zoom, et cetera, and have a wonderful Monday, everybody. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you everyone.